Hey everybody, so today I've got something really special for you. We've been doing all these videos about this practice method that Michael Brecker used and Gary Campbell and another person who really teaches this style of practicing along with a lot of other amazing ways to get better at jazz is the tenor saxophonist Rick Margitza, one of my favorite musicians and teachers on the planet. And Share Music, who actually put out the practice notebooks of Michael Brecker, just released a book by Rick called 365 Days of Practice. And the genesis of this book is really, really cool, where Rick Margitza just decided to put out one idea per day for an entire year in 2020. And the amazing thing is he actually did it. And I remember being on social media and like eagerly awaiting the idea that Rick would put out on that day. So he did it for an entire year. And then shout out to friend of the channel, Jeff Elwood, another amazing tenor saxophone player and educator, transcribed all of these ideas. And this book is what came out of it. So quick note, Share Music did send me a complimentary PDF copy of this book. There was no expectation for a review. They don't get to review this before it comes out. And they did not pay me to make this. This is just something I've been looking forward to for a long time and I wanted to get it out there so you all could experience how awesome this volume of information is. Now, just like the practice notebooks of Michael Brecker, this is gonna get you a lot more than 365 days of work. If you're creative and you really take these ideas and morph them into your own ideas, which is what we'll be talking about today, this book could last you a lifetime. What Rick has done is he's just sort of brain dumped a bunch of really, really useful ideas and really cool sounds. And now all that's left for you to do is to take those ideas and sounds and figure out how to get them into your own playing with his demonstrations and ideas as a model. And this is my favorite kind of teaching where somebody gives you some information, but you've got to do some work to take that information, make it your own, make it usable, make it something that's actually going to become a part of your vocabulary. And I think that's what this volume has done. And I absolutely love it. It's just so exciting. So when you dive into the book, Rick actually gives a really, really cool uh, sort of preface where he talks about all these different practicing concepts. And then he just dives right into the 365 ideas. Some of them are really short, short explanation, pretty self-explanatory. Some of them have a little bit of a longer explanation and some different applications, but there's uh, just a plethora of knowledge in here. Some of it is very basic. Some of it is very advanced. So there's a little bit of something in here for everybody. So I figured what I would do for this video is take one of the ideas and show how I would maybe flesh it out and make it a part of my own practice routine, ultimately hoping to take Rick's idea and turn it into a bunch for myself. So let's go to number seven, day seven, and let's look at what Rick has written for this idea. So he says, here's a longish C melodic minor idea that can be broken down into smaller components. This could be used over any of the modes, but the three that I have listed are the strongest for this example. In the case of the two dominant chords, the resolution to the fifth of the tonic minor or major is implied. I suggest you come up with your own resolution ideas. And then what he has written out is basically the same pattern, but over three different chords. So the first one being over over C minor major seven, implying that tonic mode of the melodic minor scale. Then F 13 sharp 11. Another way to think about that is F seven sharp 11, implying the fourth mode, the Lydian dominant mode of that C melodic minor scale. And then finally, he has it written out over a B7 altered chord, implying that seventh mode, that altered mode of the C melodic minor scale. Now, if you notice on the sheet, they're all the same pattern. But 
but are you starting to see the implications of what we can do with this information? So I'll go through how my brain works with this stuff, and hopefully it'll give you an insight on maybe how to use this book. All right, so the first thing that I think is let's just take a part of the idea and since he has written the second part of it over F7 sharp 11, let's use it in a 2-5 to B flat major where F7 is the five chord. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the beginning of the idea, I'm putting it where it starts, but I'm doing it at the end of the measure where the two chord is happening. And I'm just transplanting his idea into a 2-5-1 progression. But again, I am using what he actually says to do, come up with your own resolutions. So you could see that I am resolving it to the third of the one chord. Okay, so let's take this same idea in the same context, a 2-5 to the key of B-flat, but let's just do something different with it. So this time what I've done is I've taken the second measure of the pattern and I have literally just played it verbatim over the two chord and the five chord. But what I've done is I've adapted the end of the line. I've taken the last two notes and I have figured out how I want to resolve to the third of the one chord by stepping outside of the line and inserting my own material. So it's seven beats of Rick's idea, but then I've tacked on my own way of resolving to the end. So now it becomes kind of a hybrid idea between mine and Rick's. Okay, so now we also notice that the third idea he used over a B7 altered chord. So let's do something with that. So again, I'm just going to take the idea that he had in the original and I'm gonna use it verbatim, but now I'm gonna figure out how I can resolve it to the one chord where B7 alt is the five, and that would be the key of E minor. And it just works so beautifully to resolve it down by a half step to the fifth. So again, I haven't really changed anything here. I've just put it into a context and used Rick's exact line. Cool. Well, that one sounds great as well, but it has a completely different feeling than that first one that we used over B flat major. You're starting to see how flexible this material can be. All right, let's do one more in the key of E minor utilizing that B7 alt. So now what I've done is I've taken the first full measure of Rick's idea and I've messed with it a little bit, both the rhythm and the notes. But what you'll notice is that over the B7 alt measure, again, I've just used Rick's idea exactly, but a different measure of the exercise. And again, I'm just gonna resolve it and then play a little bit over the E minor chord. So you can see how this one little thing that Rick presented to me has already turned into four different applications that I think are really cool. And just using these ideas, I could come up with, you know, 20 more iterations of them. And I've been applying it to a 2-5 progression. But what if I wanted to turn this into a little bit more of like an exercise that I could practice as a warm up or something like that. Well, here's where I'm going to take an even smaller part of the idea. So I'm going to take the first four notes of this idea and I'm going to flesh it out into an entire exercise that I can use in a variety, of, again, of different applications over different scales. So the first four notes of this idea are really, really simple. He starts on a note in the scale which over the C minor major seven is the root, goes up a fourth, then goes up a third, then comes down a scale tone. 
So what if I simply just did this four note idea starting on every note of the scale? And I also try to do something interesting rhythmically with it. So I'm going to do this sequence of starting the idea on an offbeat, playing three eighth notes, then playing a quarter note, and then starting it on the next offbeat. And I'm just playing that idea off of every step of the scale until I get back to where I started. And in this case, it's the C melodic minor scale. <laughs> So very interesting harmonically, also very interesting rhythmically. And all I did was just take a tiny part of Rick's original idea and come up with a creative way to turn it into an exercise. Now, the beauty of this is that we know that we can use it over those three chord qualities that Rick presented to us. So let's see what it sounds like as an idea over a C minor major seven chord. <laughs> How about F7 sharp 11? And how about B7 altered? So it's the same group of notes, but the beauty is I get to use it in three different situations. And that's what I love about practicing this way. So it's also pretty cool to think that this was just one idea out of 365 that you get with this book. And the thing is, is if you're creative enough and you think enough, you could turn each day's idea into a whole bunch of applications that would present you with new sounds, new ways to get around your instrument, and ultimately different and new ways to think about jazz and playing over changes and think about your instrument and intervals and all that kind of stuff. And as I mentioned, on top of the 365 days of ideas, you also get a pretty rigorous rundown of how Rick Margitza thinks about practicing things. Basically, his practice philosophy. Guess what? It's very, very similar to the stuff that we've been talking about as far as the different orders, the different directions, all that stuff. So if you dug that and you dig Rick's playing and the way he thinks, you, you got to get this book. So thanks to Rick for putting these 365 ideas out into the world. Pretty amazing that he did that. I know it's given me a lot of inspiration and frankly, kicking my butt and making me realize how much stuff I need to practice. Thanks to Jeff Elwood for compiling all of this stuff. That is also a real gift to the jazz world. So thank you, Jeff. And thank you to Share Music for putting this out in a nice package that you can get as either a PDF or I think you can buy it as a physical copy as well. This is exciting stuff. We have no excuse to not practice because we've got basically a lifetime's worth of ideas. You combine this with the Brecker book, man. We all got to get in the shed. So I'll leave a link to get the uh, book below this video in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. And I can't wait to hear how you use this book to better yourself as a musician. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.